So this is the second video of my unofficial series on how to cultivate happiness from the inside out. Last time I spoke about the book, The Empty Chair, Finding Hope and Joy by Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. And today I will be talking about ideas from Zelda Pliskin's book, Gateway to Happiness. So the emotion that I wanted to talk about today is anger. So I first wanted to share a quick story that I heard last night given by a woman sharing how she disciplined her children. So one of her, she has twin boys and one of her boys was starting to run into the road and she went over and she yelled and she said, don't run into the road. And the child was frightened because his mom just yelled at him and that was that. So as she put the twins to bed, she walked out of the room, shut the door, and she heard one of her sons, the one that she yelled at, say to his brother, you know, when mommy was yelling at me, her face was black, but her heart was white. So the child knew that although he was experiencing the anger, or so it seemed from his mother, it was coming from a place of care and love. So with that said, I wanted to share a few notes about anger that Rabbi Pliskin says, and I will, I'll give the sources. It is very informative to observe your behavior and your language when you become angry. So we can circle back to that after these next ideas. A wise man advised from Orchos Tzadikin, before you become friends with someone, observe him when he gets angry. Anger over things not working out in material and physical areas stems from a lack of imuna or faith. Rabbi Eliyahu Mer Bloch, Shoroi Das. So let's actually stick with this one. So I'm thinking of a scenario that's very common and that is finding a parking spot. I don't know if you've ever been in a very, very filled parking lot at a grocery store and you see one spot and no one else is in the lot, you drive over, you're just about to get it, and what happens? Someone swoops in from, it seems as though, out of the blue, and they've taken your spot. Now this is a very common scenario where people would get angry or upset. Oftentimes people get angry because things don't go the way that they want. And the word amuna or faith indicates that we know from an intellectual level, no matter what's going on emotionally, no matter how emotionally we, we respond to our surroundings, which ultimately is a choice, that everything is gamzula tova. This too is for the good. Everything is for the good. Every scenario, every experience that we are put in, God has orchestrated, the universe has orchestrated for us almost as a test. So how will we respond? Will we be angry or will we say gamzula tova? This too is for the good. Something else will open up. The Chazan Ish wrote that there are people who on one hand are willing to devote all their energy to helping the community as a whole and individuals. Nevertheless, they lose their tempers quickly. As soon as anyone slights them in any manner, there is no restraint to their anger, and they may even physically harm someone who gets in their way. It is impossible to bestow honor and praise on such a person, since he did not work on correcting his character traits. Most likely, he does communal work because he enjoys his personal creativity and the respect he receives rather than out of love for others. And this is from the book Imuna Ubitachon, and Bitachon is trust. So circling back to the fact that he hadn't yet worked on his character traits, we'll go back to how can we inform ourselves of our behavior and our language when we become angry. So there are certain scenarios that, that make people, certain people angrier than others. And some people would use the word trigger. There's something that, that just perhaps it's being disagreed with, perhaps it's not getting what we want, perhaps it is when someone else gets upset with us, whatever it might be, everyone has their own, their own trigger for lack of a better word. So oftentimes emotions are felt very much in the body if we're aware enough. So anger can lead to increased heart rate. Um, even in our language and how we speak, we can start to speak louder, 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 faster. 
Um, anger can create shortness of breath, um, kind of a, a need to escape from the situation because as I said earlier, if it's a lack of faith, we feel as though things aren't going our way, we need to get out. Where on the contrary, we're put exactly where we need to be and the fact that there is something that's being brought up, such as anger, it's an opportunity for us to really analyze, understand what it is that might be bothering us and really, really, really empower ourselves to correct our character traits so that when another test, a similar test comes up that might anger us, we can say, hey, I know what this is. I, I know what it is that makes me feel impatient or makes me a less, less tolerable. So how am I gonna take it in a way with perhaps gratitude that God has yet again put me in this scenario? I'm not gonna get angry. I'm not gonna do that to my health. I'm not gonna do that to those around me. And um, with that said, the very last idea is that many people control their tempers when they are among strangers. A more accurate criteria for assessing where a person is holding as regards anger is how he reacts to his immediate family. We make more demands on our family than on strangers and hence are more apt to become angry if our requests are not met. And this is by Lev Eliyahu. So I just wanted to share these ideas to empower us to really be aware of the, the certain character trait that is anger, which definitely inhibits happiness, definitely inhibits joy. And um, I hope that you find it empowering that we really can be in control of our response to the world, although we're definitely not in control of what happens to us. Have a good day.